We have several important Tesla news that just dropped this morning to share with you today. First, a new version of Tesla's full self-driving is now rolling out the vehicles. This is an important one. For the first time, it includes actual Smart Summon and other long-awaited features. Smart Summon is moving much faster and goes a longer distance now. Second, with the RoboTaxi event in just a little over two weeks from now, we'll review all the features Tesla said they get done this month to see how well they're doing. Third, Elon Musk has made a comment about how fast XAI was in building what he calls the most powerful AI training cluster in the world, and he also agreed with a statement that he's going to win the AI race. Fourth, Access moving its headquarters also to Texas, joining all of Elon's other companies. And finally, we'll review the longest tweet Elon has ever done and why it's so critical for all of us. Got Jeff Lutz joining us. Jeff is the ex-CVP of Supply Chain and Chief Quality Officer and now is the CEO of his own supply chain consulting firm. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, Herbert. Lots of news uh, this week. Let's get into it. Yeah. So this week is important because this is the first week where we're going to actually start getting invites for the people that want to go to the big RoboTax event in Los Angeles. Um, the, uh, this is Travis Axelrod. He's the investor relations person for Tesla. And he said that we're going to begin communicating the results of this lottery on September 23rd. So if you have uh, shares in Tesla, you've missed it already. If you hadn't already submitted your request to you know, win a, a ticket to go there, the shocking thing about this whole thing is that it'll say, they, they say that um, space is extremely limited. So that part is what I'm really um, concerned about. It's like, why would they have such a limited space, especially since it's going to be in, um, you know, in this big event, in a big Warner Brothers studio? What's your thoughts, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, some of the other recent events, too, were pretty limited. I know the Cybertruck event was were cramped in pretty tightly. So, you know, I, I think they want they want to have the right the right viewing experience for everyone. And, and, you know, this is going to be, I think, fairly demo packed in terms of in, in what they're going to show. So yeah, these events are usually done well. They're usually exciting. So yeah, if you've got shares and just link them up and, and, you know, make sure you're entered in and, uh, and good luck to everyone this week. Yeah. So the uh, big news this morning was full self-driving 12.5.4 uh, dropped and it's being now uh, kind of uh, being you know distributed to more vehicles, rolling out the vehicles out there. It includes actual smart summon, and it has a number of other features. Uh, we'll go through that list. Is Tesla doing well with what they promised? All the things that they promised, we'll go through that list of September. This is hardware three and four, and it's going out to a, a small wave. But I think that um, as the day goes on, we're seeing it uh, spread out more. This is, um, so now the other feature that people are waiting for was sunglasses, right? Being able to wear sunglasses. And uh, it goes a longer distance than previous versions. So, you know, it's a, a small group of people have been playing with it and it's looking fantastic. Um, basically, you can call your car, you can summit wherever you're standing, it'll know how to get there. But there's a radius, right, of how far you it can go. And what they did was they expanded it. So this used to be the radius and then now it's even wider longer wider so now apparently it's uh, according to zach he said that same parking spot screenshots taken exactly an hour apart looks like an increasing range of about 100 feet 50 feet in either direction uh, what's your thought about that actual smart summon being distributed wide and then it's also getting bigger its own space so that means they must be feeling comfortable and i'm we're going to go through this but i hear also that it's driving faster actual smart summon yeah it, i mean it looks like tesla is getting more confidence in these models and I, I view actual smart summon as kind of the first instantiation of unsupervised full self-driving. There's no one in the front seat uh, during actual smart, doesn't have to be in the, in the front seat for actual smart summon. So start in a confined area, start at lower speeds, then increase the area, then increase the speed. And you're, you're basically, you know, on your way to Unsupervised FSD. Also, this is really helping train, you know, that that pickup piece of it in terms of, you know, full self-driving. Because a lot of times right now when you use full self-driving, people disengage. Maybe they do the auto park once they get into a parking lot, but they disengage because sometimes it brings you to the front door. Sometimes it brings you to other areas. And now this will really help, I think, in terms of training how consumers want to use their vehicles for pickup, the, the pickup portion of a robo taxi. So lots of good nuggets here yeah this is a video dropped by tesla showing you 
the actual smart summon in progress. So this is Tesla's version, but obviously we've been seeing other people dropping their versions of what's happening. I didn't get this, so you can explain it to me maybe. It says here that if your vehicle has this pedestrian warning system playing with actual smart summon, it will now be more thunderous for observers. So I, I guess there's some pedestrian warning system, an option for completion sound, and emissions on a board were just added. I don't know yeah, there's a is. small external speaker <laughs> in the vehicle that yeah. is capable of playing a noise. There's some jurisdictions in the world that require that the vehicle, yeah. because electric vehicles are quiet, they, they require some sort of noise in certain situations. So I think Tesla is using that requirement to their advantage here to have some fun, but also you know let people know that you know, there's a vehicle, you know, moving around them. So yeah, I think, I think uh, it's completion another sound makes sense, right? the Tesla joint. Yeah. Completion sound makes sense. When you saw that guy and he started walking across, like, you know, the car was going to park. You don't want to run it, walk in front of a car until you know, okay, this thing is stopped Correct. for sure. Uh, emissions on a board. <laughs> I'm sure that that's the fun part, right? When they stop it, yeah. you can make it fart or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tesla is also hinting at hands-free summoning. So right now, right now, when you do it, they've just pure safety. You have to press your finger on the button on the on your phone and then summon to you. And you have to keep your finger pressed on it. But it looks like that uh, there's code that they're finding here. Tesla scope. Yep. Saying you don't need Steadily it. Steadily progressing. So this is Zach. He had a chance to one of the first last night to get 12.5.4 in his uh, experience. So in a couple of zero disk engagement drives so far, really loving the improved acceleration. In assertive mode, it really gets off the line. Noticing improved creeping behavior, definitely more consistent and confident versus the last release. It decides to go and just goes. Very quick decision making. The We talked about it. The actual smart summon range is improved. Some new Easter eggs if you have a pedestrian warning system. From my initial test, it's moving a bit quicker too, which is great. Also doesn't reverse anymore at the start, which you used to do to see in front of the bumper. Awesome improvements. And that was my gripe before. Like you said, small little things like this are just going to keep improving. Not so great. Still not slowing for dips as much as I'd like. Had it partially slowed down for a dip. 12.5.3 uh, never did it. Need to test more in the daytime. Speed bump behavior is still great. Saw a couple weird hesitation slowdowns for green lights. Did this very occasionally on the first day or two. So we'll see how this build progresses. Yeah, so this is it's maybe just one of those natural things that as soon as they release the release, they're a little bit more cautious and then they, they remove that. Solid update. Need to drive this build more in the daytime. He was doing it late at night last night. And um, there's a new vision-based attention monitoring with sunglasses. And just now we're watching people saying that that's working quite nicely. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's out there there. What do you think, Jeff? I, I just think sometimes we take for granted that the progression that's happening and the fact that with the cam with the vision based system and these, you know, eight or so cameras that are looking around, you know, there's you you only have two eyeballs and they're usually looking in one direction. You have the ability to move side to side, but these things are they're on all the time. And I just think we underestimate the safety aspect that we're going to we're going to experience here. It, eventually if you just fast forward 10 years into the future, all cars should be doing this. All cars yeah. should be able to, you know, pull themselves out of a parking spot and pick you up and they should be able to park themselves and they should be able to do it perfectly. Like it should be perfectly within the lines. It should be, and, and there should be no risk, you know, to, uh, to, to people, to other vehicles because of you're, you're dealing with binary things. You're dealing with a vision, a vision based system and rules. And, and, and these things are being properly trained. So the training is going to continue to improve, you know, Tesla is bringing up training capacity and, uh, and Elon's companies are bringing them up faster than, you know, any, anyone out there doing this right now. So that that's only going to continue to improve as well. So I see a steady path for improvement. I see 10 years from now, all vehicles being able to do this in some way or another, or you're going to be really behind. And I see this being ultimately, you know, a safer solution. Yeah. And it's, that's, I like the way you put that because uh, right now we're all so focused. Uh, the event is in 1010. That's less than three weeks from now, two and a half weeks. And then we are going to be watching every little movement. But the, you know, yeah, let's move back a bit. Five years, 10 years from now, this is happening. <laughs> you, it's hard for anybody to deny at this point that this is not going to happen. So let's take a look. Uh, 
you know, Tesla released this roadmap and they said, these are the things we're going to get done by September. This is what we'll do by October and by first quarters of next year. And so we'll see how they've, um, have they progressed so far. So they said that in September, we're going to release 12.5.2. It's going to have three times improved miles between necessary interventions. It's going to be able to work on hardware three and hardware four cars. We're now calling it AI three cars and AI four cars. It's going to have actual smart summon. It's going to have Cybertruck Auto Park. It's going to be able to do eye tracking with sunglasses. And it's going to be the end-to-end -end network on highways. And Cybertrucks will have FSD. Then you got October. You're going to be able to unpark, park, and reverse in FSD. You'll be able to, uh, version 13 will be released. Uh, this is, you know, you turn on FSD and you tell it, I want you to park. Uh, or you want to, you know, um, you want to get in the car, press FSD, and then let it unpark for you and then get going. So now it's all going to be together. And then by Q1, it, depending on regulatory approval, you'll have FSD in Europe and China. So how are they doing? Tesla Scope did a good review. There's still one week left till the end of September. So let's take a look at their current progress. Looks like that 12.5.2 was actually uh, released, right? They had seven waves. And now we're going to go to the, the latest build is now over 5% of vehicles and majority were hardware three. So that is correct. Uh, they rolled it out to regular customers. We saw a unified model. So we think that these two points are accomplished. Uh, three times improved miles between necessary interventions and hardware three. Then you got actual smart summon. So, so that was initially released to early testers. And then now we're starting to see it release quicker. Uh, quicker start times, faster, fast improvements in maneuverability and positive reactions. So, you know, start it early, but then start going wide. And that's what we're seeing now. We suspect the point release is anticipated based on the lack of movement. And this was, this uh, analysis was done, I think, yesterday or two days ago. And of course, last night, a drop was actually happened. So they said, you know, time will, you know, we're, we're working on it, pending release of actual smart summit. But I think that that's going to be done now. Cybertruck Auto Park. That was released. So we have sent, seen three revisions to early builds of the Cybertruck Auto Park. So they kicked that. They said that's done. So everything else, we have not seen FSD release for Cybertruck. We've not seen the end-to-end uh, -end on version 12 yet. And then they said we've not seen wearing sunglasses. But like I say, they, this actually came out and that's there. So they think that these things are, it's happening. I think we're there. What do you think about the, this list and conclusion of what's been done and what's not done? Are they on track? Yeah, it's good progress. You have to put milestones on the team. You can't just say everything needs to be done as soon as possible. That's not leadership. That's not direction. But what you have to say is like, well, here's here's what success looks like, and here are the milestones by date that yeah you, know, you know would would deem success. And then people adjust. They make trade off decisions. Uh, they add people to projects. They do various things to accelerate progress when there's an actual, we need it by this date. So I think that's what Tesla is doing here. I mean, they're also just, they're communicating to their customers. There's millions of people that own Teslas and there's many hundred thousands, maybe eventually in the future, more than a million that will be, you know, using um, FSD services. So you have to put the milestones on the team. I think the progress is good. Two things I'm looking for is getting that highway, you know, end to end. I think that's important. I think you see a now noticeable difference now in terms of the decision making on highways versus uh, city streets and, and the divergence there. That I'm looking forward to that coming together, and of course, I'm looking forward to FSD on Cybertruck. So there's some big milestones coming, but yeah, this is this is great progress. I noticed that they use the term, uh, you know, for version 13, six X improvement and necessary interventions. Mm -hmm. So now you have safety critical interventions. You have non-critical interventions, and now you have necessary interventions. So it's interesting how they're starting to maybe bifurcate some of this data and segment it. And and hopefully they, they're getting good analytics from the vehicles where they can actually track this and and you know and you know when they're getting the feedback from the vehicle, they can know the difference between a necessary and and more of a, a kind of a lower because you're, uh, you're going to want to improve all of these aspects. Like for ride comfort, you're going to, even though it's a non-critical intervention, someone has to press the accelerator, you, know, so you want to improve all these aspects. Uh, but clearly you want to get the necessary ones, uh, the any, any safety critical ones knocked out. So 
I'm looking forward to this. And, you know, October is going to be another big month. It looks like every, you know, they're really trying to get North America rock solid this year and then take that release and use it as a baseline for deployment in the first half of next year in Europe and, and Asia. Yeah, I think that list was great because if you can see them, like you said, they had the great milestones. And the reason why that's so important is because October 10th is coming. And not that it has to be done before October 10th, uh, nothing like that, but just more that it just shows you, are they still on track? They gave a milestone list. This is the actual autopilot team, not Elon. <laughs> We're going to get these things done. They're hit, knocking it out. So it feels to me that they get the uh, the key features so that it's feature complete. And you're right. The, the big one is the merging of the highway stack with that. But once that's done, it seems like everything else is ready to go. I think the Cybertruck is, is important because it shows you that they can now take FSD and apply it to different form factors. That sets us up to many different kinds of vehicles in the future. So once we get feature complete, then it becomes, okay, is it ready? And when is it, when will it be ready for rollout of a paid service? That's what we're going to hear, hopefully, on 1010. So let's uh, take a look at what Elon has said himself. He replied to this tweet by Frida Dwan. Uh, Frida is uh, a principal at Altimeter Capital, and she's been doing fantastic work of analyzing full self-driving, just like ARK Invest has been doing. She actually went to China, tested out 20 of their different uh, uh, self-driving competitors out there. And her conclusion at that time was uh, they're fantastic. Those are doing really well, but Tesla is in a league of their own. Now she's saying this, after months with FSC 12, I've gone past the, wow, this is magic face. The analyst in me scrutinizes every disengagement at edge cases. But today I just had one of those tears in my eyes moments on a mini road trip flawlessly handled the winding roads, always been my worst nightmare. No human I know could have done better. Perfectly centered, smooth turns, idle speed, fair so human-like. Two hours, the driver is completely relaxed, finished breakfast, and even the most carsick passenger played on their phone. Zero disengagements, perfectly smooth. Pass the coffee cup test that uh, Ashok Swami said. <laughs> he said that I'd love it if I, my, top, my test is coffee cup. I put a coffee cup, and if it doesn't spill while it's driving you around, that means it's a... Uh, actually a very good driver. Achieving AGI and self-driving is one of the toughest challenges out there, but with 3 trillion miles driven annually and 12 hours per week behind the wheel, it's poised to be one of humanity's greatest unlocks. We're talking trillion dollar disruptions that no one's fully grasping yet. Reshaping cities, real estate traffic, car ownership, every step forward gets us closer to the future we all deserve. What you just said uh, earlier, 10 years from now, this is all gonna be here and it's looking like that 10 years is, is for sure. Maybe it's gonna come earlier, Elon said it only gets better from here. And remember, she was using an older version of test of FSD. Yeah, I mean, people are it's 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 meaningfully different what you can drive now in September of 2024 versus what was even available in May or, or March of 2024. It's it's meaningfully better. And there's more features being added. So Tesla's gonna be able to unlock some of that uh uh, revenue that they would be able to get by having these features turned on and activated. But I think what she's speaking to is really the maturity of it and how it can be used in your daily life to basically take something where you'd start a two hour drive and, you know, two hour drives, not insignificant. It's not, it's not huge, but at the end of these, at the end of the drive, you'd have a lot more energy. You're not as stressed. You're not dealing with all these things. You're supervising it. You're watching it. You're making sure it does the right things. But as it, you know, as it as it needs less and less of your involvement, it becomes a much, you know, lower stress activity. And how do you put a price on that? And, and I and I think Tesla, what Tesla is doing, they're doing some various different things with pricing and packages. And they're trying to figure out what this convenience unlocks, you know, with consumers today. But then knowing that as they progress this and make it better and it gets to unsupervised, it unlocks many different things and, and it, it, it unleashes a lot of different things in the economy that people haven't even thought of yet, as, as, Frida, as Frida mentioned. So we're in an interesting point of inflection here. And, and I, think we're, I think we're really going to you know, experience something special here, really, honestly, over the next several months. This is Frida's drive, so we don't need to watch all of it, but just to share with you what she was talking about. Okay. 
Okay, well, that is uh, a lot of updates on FSD. Very important because 1010 is the event that's going to, you know, change the book for Tesla. We'll see how that comes out. But the other one is XAI. And uh, is Tesla, is Elon a leader in AI? And he himself seems to, you know, say that, uh, hey, we're doing really well. This guy named Aleph, he said, XAI is just more proof that claiming Elon Musk got lucky or managed to buy already successful businesses is pure cope. He somehow managed to do it again, right? He built a mega GPU cluster and acquired a bunch of top AI talent. He literally did it again. So here's another multi-billion dollar comp uh, business just seemingly out of nowhere. And, um, and then... Elon replied to him saying, XAI built the most powerful AI training cluster in the world in 122 days, despite starting years after uh, others. Our competitors are moving as fast as they can, just not as fast as XAI. That is really critical how move you, how fast you move. Now, you, you had a great uh, tweet. I wanted to ask you about this because I thought it was uh, very important. You said it's called TTV, time to volume, which is a drive of TTBE, time to break even, uh, time to break even. Those who treat return on capital invested like it's a pin pulled from a hand grenade know the importance of this concept and are great stewards of capital. Uh, so what I'm gathering here is you're saying that if you have a, um, a, a sense of urgency and you invest money, you want to get to time to scale as fast as to get out there to actually run and be in production, and then you'll get to time to break even as fast as possible because you respect the, amount, the money you put in, the investment you put in. And you know, what, what Elon has been able to achieve with XAI. And he did also, by the way, with Tesla's Cortex, which is also one of the largest supercomputers in the world. That tells you the difference. Yeah, can you explain that to us? Yeah, I, you can, you know, time to TTVs, time to value or time to volume as well, you can use. And what you're trying to do is you're, you're I explained it in the tweet, you're, you're trying to have the most efficient use of invested capital. And, and that there's a speed element to it. There's also uh, a minimization or sim uh, simplicity element to it. Like, you know, can, can you can you stretch out the value per dollar of that capex? And what it looks like Elon's doing with with XAI and with Tesla, and with the with these G with this GPU investment and the, and ramping up of this training is is ultimately trying to get to the most efficient use of like, I order the product, and it ships from you know Nvidia. It ships from you know, some of their sub assemblers that are doing some of the other work and they're literally, he has a stopwatch in his hand and he's looking at how long does it take to go from me receiving product where I money has left, you know, Tesla money has left XAI and gone to these companies to buy this stuff. What is that? How does that cash look like? And, and, and how long does it take for me to take that investment and turn it into something that's actually uh, training and processing information and that therefore consumers are now going out and buying the product that is using that training data. And that whole loop is ultimately this network that we're talking about here. And this sense of urgency around, and, this, and by the way, NVIDIA sees this, Jensen sees this and respects it in terms of when they ship product, the suppliers love this too, and partners love this too. And that's what will make Tesla to be a great partner in any allocation discussion, the next one, you know, Blackwell, for example, if you're NVIDIA, if you're Jensen, number one, you know that uh, Elon is, is now, you know, driven the profile of this and the importance of this up very high with others, obviously. But if you ship him product, he's going to t take it, receive it, get it into service and have it start producing meaningful results faster than anybody. And you, that's what you want when you're supplying something like this. So th there's great importance in time to value or time to volume, time to break even, and really driving return on in invested capital and, and, and driving that performance up and treating it, like I said, with great urgency. So I'm sure Elon had, you know, very simple goals on the team around speed around the quality of the work, making sure you're not just like we're not throwing this thing together and getting horrible utilization or getting horrible efficiency out of the system. I'm sure there's a speed element and a performance element. At that that whole process is called having goals and tension. And my guess is he's a master at doing that and and putting those simple goals and tension on the team of like, you gotta go fast. It's gotta be really good. 
Here are the metrics I want you to hit. This is what you did last week. I want you to even be, you know, faster this week, or I want a, you know, better performance output this week. So it, it's, you know, it's a great steward of capital. If you're investing in XAI, you're investing in Tesla, you know, you have somebody that, that minimizes CapEx use, but when he gets it, he converts it, turns it around and makes it, turns it into something that produces revenue very quickly. I love it. Yeah. Return on capital investment is a lot more important, I think, than people realize. You've explained this to me a few times now, because obviously it's not just speed, right? Speed, of course, is critical. Get it out as fast as possible, but it's return on that. So can you get paid <laughs> for that investment? Because if you're paid for that investment sooner than everyone else, you're going to have money, cash to buy more and then to buy more. So it's not just launching right away, how quickly it is. So here's what happened to XAI. It's amazing. This guy named Smokeway said, suddenly a wild XAI appears. Take a look at these scores, independent scores about which is the great, you know, it's called chatbot arena, right? They pit the chatbots against each other. They pit them against these different standardized tests. You can see XAI just appeared out of nowhere right here. This is a... Uh, as kind of a, a, a blow up of that little corner there. XAI didn't even exist. All these other chatbots were existing years ago, months and years ago, month and a year, a couple of years ago. And then all of a sudden uh, XAI appears, boom. And then they're right at the top already. Um, OpenAI, Google's there. XAI is right, in top, right beside Google already. They're way ahead of everyone else. Uh, this guy, Bojan Tunga says, Elon's going to win the AI race by pure raw dogging the scale of compute. More compute, more likely you're going to get up there. Elon replied to him saying, Grok 3 is already training with 10 times, soon 20 times the compute of what Grok 2 was trained on. So compute and getting there soon is what matters. Uh, what's your thought about what he's saying there? And now he's talking about Grok, which uh, of course is very critical for both Tesla because of the robotaxi and the bots. But whatever they learn here in XAI, you bet they're doing the same thing with Tesla's uh, Cortex computer. Elon's at the top of this allocation chain of, you know, dealing with NVIDIA, dealing with Oracle, dealing with Dell, dealing with all these different partners. And what all these partners and suppliers know is that when they give capital, not give, but when they do, when they transact with Elon uh, on a, on capital, that he's going to take it and get it into production as quickly as possible. And you're right. He's going to take these lessons learned from bringing up the XAI cluster, you know, into the Tesla cluster. And at some point, there, there is going to be convergence, uh, where, whether it's a robotaxi, whether it's a humanoid robot, at some period down the line, those two things are going to come together. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have the, the capability you see now with Grok and, and, it, and, and it's ramping up. You're going to have that integrated with, you know, Tesla's, you know, unsupervised full self-driving capability. And I want to note the key difference is... When you're doing these tasks vertically integrated, you have one person at the top of both of these entities that's working on trade-offs, that's working, you know, that's pushing and driving the schedule. You don't have these different companies with different priorities trying to work together and figure it out. And sometimes different companies can get together. Obviously, Tesla has to work with partners to bring up the, the current training system today, but it's not optimal. You know, Tesla has to pay 70, 75%. We don't know exactly what they're paying for, but, you know, NVIDIA's gross margins are, you know, 74%. So you, you, you have to pay for this. You have to pay for these services. You have to pay a, a great margin on these services. And then when you start pulling these things together, so if you're another company that's doing robotaxis and you don't have this training capability or you don't have this voice assistant or you don't have the people that can merge the two together, get the timing right, get the latency right, get the speakers right, get the, the microphones right, get that whole audio system working perfectly, then you're going to have some sort of suboptimized system. Because sometimes, you know, one supplier is trying to feed, you know, 50 different automakers and what they're all trying to do, and they're not all using the same thing. So there's a big advantage of not only vertical integration from a supply chain perspective, but also vertical integration in terms of product and product development. And that's what you'll see here, uh, I think, with, you know, XAI's effort and Tesla's efforts eventually, you know, merging over time in the form of product, RoboTaxi. Not just and, XAI, and not just Tesla, but X, SpaceX, all of them, his ecosystems. And you can see what you're saying that one person is in charge of, you know, vertically integrated, but also multiple companies. It really will make a difference. Um, you know, X 
is moved their headquarters now to be in Texas, um, known as Hyperloop Plaza. It includes other parts of Elon's other ventures. So that's where Starlink, some parts of it there, the Boring Company, of course. Uh, so Texas is really where he's uh, concentrating less travel for him. I think it's good. Now, a, a great reminder, because this leads up to Elon's longest tweet that we've ever seen him ever do. So years ago, he said, let's allocate 1% of our efforts to make life multiplanetary. I'll play that. And then he said, for the first time in 4.5 billion years, it's possible for life to become multiplanetary. Uh, he replied to that. So I'm going to play this quick, quick. I do think that 99% of our effort should be focused on Earth. And, and really, 99.9% .9 of our effort is focused on Earth. Yeah. But I do think it's, it's worth saying, OK, let's take 1%. Um, and try to establish uh, a, a self-sustaining city on Mars and make life multiplanetary. And I think there's a couple of good reasons for that. First mm -hmm. of all, um, there's always the possibility that there could be some terrible thing that happens on Earth that we can't and that we maybe don't anticipate. And if you look at the fossil record and the fact that there have been five major extinction events in the last 500 million years, mm -hmm. um, and what happened to the dinosaurs? They used to be here, they're not around anymore. So that's kind of the defensive argument. Uh, and then there's the... Um, what I call maybe the inspiration argument or mm. the excitement. Building a city on Mars would just be this incredible adventure. That there be things in life that are exciting and inspiring, that when yeah. you wake up in the morning, you're like, yes, I'm glad to be alive. Mm -hmm. And um, I think having this great adventure would, would, would be like that. That was nine years ago, and here we are. <laughs> it's another one of, you remember you said earlier, very beginning, like 10 years from now, all cars will be automated and um, automated and like, yeah. But uh, here we are, nine years ago, he said that now we're, SpaceX is planning to launch five uncrewed starships to Mars in two years. If those all land safely, crewed missions are possible in four years. If we encounter challenges, then accrued the missions will be postponed another two years. So yeah, it's still going to take longer. I'm sure it's uh, longer than he initially predicted, but it's happening. SpaceX is successful. They got reusable rockets. That's a fact. It's only possible to travel from Earth to Mars every two years when the planets are aligned. This increases the difficulty of the task, but also serves to immunize Mars from many catastrophic events on Earth. Okay, so there's pros and cons, but that means that they need to hit it now or it'll be delayed. No matter what happens with landing success, SpaceX will increase the number of spaceships traveling to Mars exponentially with every transit opportunity. We want to enable anyone who wants to be a space traveler to go to Mars. That means you or your family or friends dreams of a great adventure. There'll be thousands of starships going to Mars and it will be a glorious sight to see. Can you imagine? Wow. The fundamental existential question is whether humanity becomes sustainably multiplanetary before something happens on Earth to prevent that nuclear war, super virus, population collapse, where it loses the ability to send supply ships to Mars. One of my biggest concerns right now, Starship program is being smothered by a mountain of government bureaucracy that grows every year. This stifling red tape is affecting all large projects in America. For example, California spent $7 billion several years on high-speed rail, only has 1,600 feet section of concrete to show for it and it shows you why are we you know you know elon despite his politics man the guy gets things done that support him while i have many concerns about a potential kamala regime my absolute showstopper is that the bureaucracy currently choking america to death is guaranteed to grow under a democratic party administration this would destroy the mars program and doom humanity it cannot happen your help would be much appreciated a fork maybe the fork in the road of human destiny what'd you think about his longest tweet ever you can tell he's passionate about this and, and, and there's some important points too about even if you're, you're not talking about government, you're talking about your own company or you're talking about the company you work inside of companies tend to collect requirements kind of like, you know, you know, just things are just sticking to you over time. Just imagine if you're just walking and people are putting another post-it note on you putting another post-it note on you. And all of a sudden this is happening for years. And all of a sudden you're all of a sudden we can't even see Herbert anymore because he's just covered. And if each post-it note is a, is a requirement and no one's ever pulling those post-it notes off of you saying, well, maybe we don't need this anymore. Maybe th this one requirement that we added last year, you know, supersedes these other two and we don't need these other two. Instead companies just tend to add and they don't have, they don't go in and have a cleansing cycle or they don't have any rules around add one, take two out. And so this is a very important thing. And it does feel like there could be more of the same, you know, I don't get overly political, but there could be more of the same on one side, or there could be something radically different on the other side. In the end, either party has the opportunity 
to really go in and make a meaningful impact here as it relates to these requirements. We should be we should set goals just like Kennedy set goals uh, in terms of space. We should have a president that sets goals in terms of uh, our ability to explore space and do things that are meaningful that can have meaningful value back you know, for our population here on earth. So I would like to see, even though I think a lot of this is going to be accomplished from a private perspective, if you have the government behind it, it can help you with these things that, you know, that, that SpaceX is currently dealing with right now. So you can tell long, you know, long post, very passionate about, um, you know, very passionate about this topic and its meaning. And I think a lot of his companies today are all kind of, if you think about it, they're all kind of, a, they form a basis for this ultimate goal of making life multiplanetary, whether it's, you know, interstellar, you know, communications, you know, whether it's SpaceX, he's also going to do something with the rocket industry that he's already started doing this, which is just not conventional, which is high volume, uh, high frequency production and, and very rapid iterations. And so instead of going through these long cycles, you just start everything in a, in a much higher frequency manner. You still do the rigorous testing, but you just continue, you have this continuous flow, this iterative flow of product coming out. So there's just so many new things here. I think we're going to look, if, if you were to crack open a history book 30 or 50 years from now, whether it's space or whether it's a transition in, in, in the auto industry, whether it's AI, whether it's, you know, what's going on with Neuralink, what's going on with potentially with, with boring and the expand and the expansion of, of that, you're going to see just a fundamental transformation. And a lot of this is, are being driven by Elon and his companies. That's why we do what we do. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate you joining us. The progress is what the theme is of today's show. All the progress that with FSD. Now you're seeing progress with XXAI and SpaceX. All of this matters um, and the speed by which they're doing it. And it shows you not only Elon Musk, but Tesla and tells us, uh, you know, all the companies in the ecosystem. Follow Jeff on his X account at the Jeff Lutz, and you should also subscribe to him if you can. And uh, <laughs> if you have, if you're about to buy a car, go use his referral code. Thank you, everybody. Follow Jeff. See you soon. Bye bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.